from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. We glorify your name, O Lord, this morning. As we come before you, O God, to worship and give you all the praise, O Lord, may you touch us again. May you touch us again today, O God. May your spirit fill our hearts, O God. May your spirit fill our hearts, O Lord. May each and every person in this place be touched by you, O God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that let the service be a life-changing moment for so many people. Let this service be a life-changing moment for us, O Lord. Let us experience you, O oh God. Let us experience your touch. Let us experience your, 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 your voice, O oh God. Let us experience your goodness, O oh Lord, during the service. I pray for each and every one in this place and those who are still coming. Let your favor continue to be over us. Let your protection be over us always, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Can I see some smiles? I know it's hot, but can I see smiles? Please. How's everyone doing this morning? Can we greet people around us? This guys, come greet this guys, this guys, come greet this guys. Waves, hugs, whatever possible, that's legal. As you can see today, as you can see today, it's the three musketeers. So I need your voices to be as loud as possible. Can you do that for me? You are my babies today, so you need to be as loud. We, we are guys. We can go as high as, yeah. So ladies, gentlemen, please, your hands clapping, your voices shouting. You good? Enjoy the service. Amen. I want to scream it out from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me. Your kindness fills my life. Your love amazes me. Hey, and I sing because. You are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good. Let's sing again that part. And I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good. You are good. Nothing and no one comes anywhere close to you. The earth and oceans deep only reflect this truth. Then in my darkest night, you shine as bright as day. Your love amazes me, and I sing, and I sing, because you are good, and I dance, because you are good, and I shout, because you are good, you are good, oh, when I sing, and I sing, because you are good, and I dance, because you are good, and I shout, because you are good, 
you are good to me and in the cry of praise my heart will proclaim because you are good you are good and in the sun or rain my heart celebrates you are good you are good and your son and in the sun or rain, my life celebrates. You are good. You are good. And I sing because you are good. And I dance because you are good. And I shout because you are good. Oh, when I sing because you are good and I dance because you are good and I shout because you are good, you are good, good to me. Feeling warm now. <laughs> Here I am before you, falling in love and seeking your truth. Knowing that your perfect grace has brought me to this place. Because of you, I freely live my life to you, oh God, I give. So I stand before you, God. I lift my voice because you set me free. So I shout out your name from the rooftops I proclaim and I am yours, and I am yours. All the good you've done for me, I lift up my hands for all to see, you're the only one. Who brings me to my knees to share this love across the earth, the beauty of your holy word. So I kneel before you, God. I lift my hands for you set me free. So I shout out your name. Oh, and I am yours, I am yours, oh, that I am, Lord, oh, that I am, I place into your loving hands, and I am yours, I am yours, you I am, I stand, with arms wide open to the one, the Son, the everlasting God, the everlasting God. Oh, here I am, here I am, I stand with arms wide open to the one, the Son, the everlasting God. The everlasting God. So I shout out your name from.
from the rooftops I proclaim I am yours that I am yours I am yours oh that I am Lord oh that I am I place into your loving hands and I am yours I am Oh, so I shout out your name from the rooftops. I proclaim that I am yours. I am yours. Oh, that I am, Lord. Oh, that I am. I praise it to your loving hands. And I am yours, I am yours, Jesus, I'm breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole world with holy thunder who leaves us breathless with no and wonder the king of glory the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I will be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings the chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and justice Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King above all kings This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place that you would bear my cross. You lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the King who conquered Let's go one more time. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. 
Worthy is the Lamb who was saved. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you will take my place. That you will bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I will be set free. sing for all that you've done for me. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your We thank you for your grace, O oh God. We thank you for your love, O oh Lord. We thank you for being God in our lives always. We thank you, Lord, for everything. We thank you, Jehovah. We worship you today.
Again, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Let's raise your voice and sing. And sing like never before. So bless my Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy, sing like never, sing like never before.
And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul sing your praise Glorify your name, O oh Lord, and we worship you today. May your name be glorified, O oh Lord, now and forevermore. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this morning, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we come here and give praise, glory, and honor to your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the beautiful songs we heard this morning, Lord, that we sing, Lord. Father, you deserve all the great, all the prayer, and everything, Lord, that comes to you and to you alone, Lord, to nobody else. So, Jesus, we say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. Thank you for everything you're doing for us, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, before we start communion, has everybody got this? And if you haven't got, raise your hand so the ushers can bring it to you, please.
Thank you. In case you think I'm, I'm doing the, 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 the sermon this morning, it's wrong. It's, it's David's. I'm just doing the communion. <laughs> yeah. Not, uh... <laughs> All right, everybody, everybody got? Good. Okay, let's start. Communion represents the greatest expression of God's love for all his people, and that includes you and me. Communion also brings connection. It focuses our hearts and our minds on God and brings us into complete unity with Him. So when we take communion, we are recognizing the power of what Jesus did when He died on the cross for each and every one of us. You know, God doesn't want us to walk in heaviness. He doesn't want us to live a life, a mundane life. He wants us to walk in excitement and expectation. And as we do this by faith, we are releasing the power of salvation, healing, and revival. A fresh and new in our lives. Every day, fresh and new in our lives. So this morning, as, we, as our leader was in the music, he was saying, praying for healing and everything. We got it. It's there. So as we do this by faith, we are... We are um, we are releasing the power of salvation, healing, and revival afresh in our lives every day. That is the good news. Wow, what good news is that? That we can have healing, deliverance, and abundant life in Him. Abundant life. The price has been paid. Jesus has paid the price. There's nothing more we can do. Everything has been done for each and every one of us here. So, the, living, the loving instruction of Jesus is that we are to remember what he did for us when we partake of communion. We are to remember the promises of God and his word. And as we do so, our confidence is built up in him and we trust more in him. So let us pray. Jesus, because your body was broken for us and your blood was shed for us, we can be free from the power and penalty of sin. You took our punishment. You conquered the grave. You were raised to life, and you've made us alive. Today we remember and celebrate the precious gift of life. And as we partake of the communion, we say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, folks. Hopefully... You can get these things open. I normally take quite a bit of time, and if I can't do it, Antoinette does it for me. So, let's start opening up our, our communion and get the bread, the wafer. Everybody? Everybody ready? Uh, I see some people are still suckling you. All right. And Jesus, this morning as we, talk, as we eat of the bread, we remember that you are the bread of life. Amen. You feed our souls. You nourish our hearts. And you give us sustenance to run the race before us. So let's take the bread and eat it and remember what Jesus did for us. Thank you, Jesus. As we drink of the cup, we are declaring that we are forgiven and have been made righteous. 
The blood, the blood of Jesus gives us a right standing before God. So, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Thank you, Jim. Let's drink the... Heavenly Father, we praise you for this time of communion that you've given us so freely. Thank you that we can carry in our hearts the riches of this eternal goodness. Amen. Amen. Can we have the announcements, please? Welcome to our visitors. If you are visiting us for the first time today, we would like to invite you to our guest zone at the back of the church straight after the service. There you will have the opportunity to connect with some of our church members and collect a small gift. Our Tiny Todd Zone is open to all children up to the age of five years old. Just a reminder that the area is not supervised, therefore a parent or guardian is to remain in the Tiny Tot Zone with the child for the duration of the service. We value giving to God as an act of worship. It is not our custom to pass offering bowls around during the service. We do, however, want to encourage you to bring your tithes and offerings to God by using either the large offering bowls at the front of the church or the boxes located in the center of the building. There is also a collection box in the foyer for your convenience. You may also use online banking, but please use your tithe number or your name and surname as a reference when depositing. Shal is available to assist you if you have any questions. Phew. Okay, that doesn't make any more noise. Yay! Wasn't that a great time of worship this morning? Yeah, I think God deserves that applause. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. That really was good worship. Thank you, Father. And uh, this morning there's just some notices that I want to get through. Uh, uh, the very first one is for those who follow the Faith for Daily Living, right, and use this in your morning devotions, the new ones uh, for whatever quarter, month, May and June, yes, I see it right down your small print. Uh, they are now available in the front there. They are there to be taken. All we ask, please, is that you uh, provide us a little donation to help fund these things. Uh, that will be great. Thank you. Uh, then, Steve, thank you. Good time. Yeah, well done. I don't know if you picked it up, but he looked a little bit nervous. Eh? Mm, just a little. right? In fact, he did so well. <laughs> Tony says you're preaching next week. <laughs> yeah, fun. Uh, and then I heard some 
great news this morning, and it goes around uh, the Romberg family. Uh, and there's a Gareth sitting at the back there somewhere, hiding away, who got engaged. Yeah. So that's going to be good fun. We'll speak afterwards. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, to all those folk who are visiting us, and I, I know that there's some of you I haven't seen this morning, uh, right? Those who are visiting us for the first time, welcome. It's great that you're with us today. Thank you for joining us. Yes, really is good. Uh, and I really believe we're going to have some fun this morning. Amen. Are you looking forward to what God has to share with us? Right, let's pray together. Father, thank you that as we come into your presence, as we draw closer to you, your promise is that you will draw closer to us. And Father, right now we need you close to us. We need you, Father. Without you, this is just a meeting. But with you, Lord, it's a time of exciting change. It's a time of revival with you, of being renewed, being restored. And that's what we're seeking after. That's what our, our heart's desire is. So, Father, would you infuse my words with your truth? Guide me and help me this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the good news is we're continuing with our, our series on earth as it is in heaven. Right? And, and we're going to carry on with this. Today we're dealing with the subject uh, that is, what is an open heaven? Right? It's, it's part of our getting ready for revival teachings making sure that we get our hearts and our minds sorted out so God can bring revival. Amen. Right? That's what we want. We, we need more of that, Lord. Now, one of the phrases that we so often hear whenever there's a discussion about revival is this phrase, it's an open heaven or under an open heaven. Have you ever wondered what they mean? Well, today I'm going to look at that subject, what is an open heaven, so that we can understand why it is so important for our Christian life that we live under an open heaven. Oh. Are, are, are you interested yet? Okay, some are, yes. All right. So let me talk a little bit about uh, astronomy. I didn't say astrology. I said astronomy. Right. Shirley and I had the opportunity to experience what was known as a star safari. Uh, no, we didn't drive, drive through the suburbs of Pretoria and have someone pointing out to us, oh, so-and-so celebrity stays here and so-and-so. Didn't do that. Uh, we went out and we were looking at the night sky. And we had somebody... <laughs> and we had somebody who was much cleverer than, uh, than we are pointing out what was what, and which star was which star, and, yeah. We, we were on a farm up in Falwater. Yeah, that's Durengon Iverster, where it's nice and warm. And that night, once it got dark, yeah, about 8 o'clock, we, we all went out onto this field, and it's a farm, it's a field, use your imagination, right? Uh, there were no lights around. It was just stars. And, you know, I was amazed at how bright those stars were. I, I was even more amazed at how close they appeared. Because that's all you could see was the light of the stars. And then I was really amazed when he started to say, oh, and... This cluster of stars is called. Yeah, and I looked at him and I looked at the stars and I said, that's just stars, man. Yeah, the imagination of people that they could name those stars something. 
The only group of stars that I, ever, that I can recognize and still to, day, to this day can only recognize is the Southern Cross. Right? That's all I know. But as I was looking at this incredible beauty, a thought struck me. And that was, how much greater would heaven be? How much greater would the beauty in heaven be? Right. And I was looking at this, the, the physical uh, heavens around us, and I realized, you know, there are invisible heavens around us as well. Uh, and so I started to, to just be aware of the invisible parts around us. And perhaps this table will go a little bit to, ex to help explain what I'm talking about. What we could see there is what we term the first heaven. Right? The, the physical sky, the physical heavens around us, a visible world. But then there's also the second heaven, which is an invisible realm. A, a place where angels and demons exist, and they move around. But that's not heaven that we talk about. Because the third heaven is where God rules over all. That's heaven. When we talk about an open heaven, this is the heaven we talk about. Right? And because God rules there and he's on his throne, everything is perfect and it's wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we speak about an open heaven... We are talking about God's presence, God's power, Him on His throne, breaking through the invisible, through the second heaven, into our physical world here at this moment in time. God's perfect reality invading our physical world. Now just think about it. When we pray for somebody and they are healed, you, do you know what's actually happened? They healed. Yes, I know that. Right? Uh, what's actually happened, it's a demonstration that God in his heaven has broken through to our physical world and touched that person's life. The kingdom of God has come on earth as it is in heaven. That's what we term an open heaven. Got it? Okay. Now, just to make sure that uh, you don't think that I'm talking a lot of nonsense, Jesus in Luke chapter 10 verse 9 said, Heal the sick and say to the people when you do that, right, the kingdom of God has come near. Heaven has broken in. You see, right now, where we are, we can't always say we are under an open heaven. Yeah? Right? But when revival breaks out, then we know for sure that we're living an, an, under an open heaven. Which is why we're looking for revival. Which is why we, we're pushing in to get revival. That we, we keep on saying to God, Lord, we need you here amongst us. Bring revival, Lord. Another way of saying being under an open heaven is saying we're moving closer to God. Because you know the promise of Scripture where he says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Or we can say the kingdom of God has broken into the reality of our physical circumstances. It really is on earth as it is in heaven. But with all the focus on an open heaven, there are some incorrect teachings that are out there. And I'm going to just highlight some of the main points very briefly. The very first one is, the heavens are only open for a short, short time and then God closes them again. Right? Uh, after that, you will hear these things get added to that teaching as well. Only during this time of open heaven does God bring revival 
and prosperity to the churches. And he adds an increase of wealth to the church. So that's why you uh, search out an open heaven. No. Right. Or God pours out his blessings and manifestations of his glory and power only when the heavens are open. Now let's get to the truth. The truth is found in Luke chapter 3, verses 21 to 22. Uh, because the heavens opened when Jesus, who was in obedience to God, he was baptized by John, and the Holy Spirit came down onto Jesus. Here on earth, and has never left. Verse 21 says, the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him. Nowhere does it say the heavens were closed. Nowhere does it say, and the Holy Spirit left. So since that moment, heavens have been opened to us. They have not been closed. And the greatest adventure that we could ever experience is to discover this truth for ourselves and then always live in the experience of an open heaven. Because here's the truth. God has designed each of us, you and me, each of us to live every single day of our lives knowing and experiencing that we are equipped with all the perfection of heaven. Because it's open. No, oh, it's very quiet in this place. So when we meet someone who is sick, oh, the rubber hits the road now, doesn't it? We know, because we know, that their complete healing is in heaven. And we, you and me, we are empowered and we are equipped to reach into heaven, in the spiritual, bring down health to the physical, and that person's sickness is banished from their life. That's who we are. So if you pick up your phone and you look at it, and you put it on the front camera, so you can see what your face looks like, right? you can say, you are equipped to bring healing to others through the power of God. Amen. So of course, now... We know that not everybody does this, right? Why not? Why doesn't everyone experience more of this? Well, I think if I look at myself, because now I'm preaching to myself more than I'm preaching to anybody else, we don't always believe that we are good enough to receive anything from God. This is why. We don't believe we're good enough. If you're sitting here this morning and you're thinking, or, or you've had the thought, I'm not good enough for God. I've got two words for you. Stop it. <laughs> the truth is, you are God's beloved. You are valued beyond words. You are his chosen person to bring his love and mercy and grace to everyone in all circumstances. So just stop it. Hang on to the truth of who you are in God's presence. He loved you so, so, so much that he gave his only son to die. For you and me. 
Hang on to those truths. And the Bible says we are heirs of his kingdom. And you know what that means? To be an heir means that everything that is in heaven is ours. Let that one sink in. Did you take note? I didn't say some things. I said all. Everything that is in heaven belongs to us. It's time that we believe that and we repent from this whole thing that says, I'm not good enough. God doesn't love me enough. Let's leave that behind us and turn to what, it, uh, what, God really, what God's word really says to us. Because you see, unfortunately what happens is many Christians repent enough to be forgiven, but not enough to see the kingdom of God and to experience it in their life. Jesus knew this. He knew that this was so true. And so what he did was he taught his disciples. And in Matthew chapter 5, he says this. He says, happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. And then he adds, the kingdom of heaven, what's that word? Belongs to them. You see, being spiritually poor is that realization and acceptance and understanding that me in myself, by my strength, can do nothing. Only by being totally reliant on God will something happen. Only when we are fully dependent on God to bring revival will revival come in this place as it is in heaven. When we accept that, we are totally dependent on God. At that point, we've identified ourselves as being spiritually poor. And right at that moment, everything that is in the kingdom of God, heaven, right? And the word is, belongs to us. Come on, say it with me. Everything that is in the kingdom of God belongs to me. Oh, forget the us. Let's say it like we mean it. Everything that is in the kingdom of God belongs to me. That's what Jesus taught. It's what he taught those who followed him. That's what's in the Bible. It's not something I'm sucking out of a thumb. It's truth from Scripture. And it really is time that we repent. That we repent from being this self-made person. This self-reliant person who's totally in control all the time. Now, I want to misquote a popular saying because I'm going to deal with the whole wealth issue that is in the wrong, uh, that, that are wrong teachings. So I'm going to misquote a popular saying from a few years ago, and I want to ask this question, well, what about the money? Proverbs 10.22 says, The Lord's blessing is our greatest wealth. All our work adds nothing to it. Here's something which you may not have realized. There is no need for money in heaven. You know, there's no banks in heaven. I won't say why. <laughs> uh, and just for Alan, there's no cash in transit trucks. Just think about this. 
when God led Moses and the Israelites out of Egypt and towards the promised land, for the time that they were in the wilderness, God's presence was with them uh, during the day and during the night, and it was visible, right? We know this one. But during that time, clothes didn't wear out. Shoes didn't break. And they were walking in a desert, right? Their food and drink was provided for them every single day because they were totally dependent and reliant on God. And we know that God is present with us today. Yeah? yeah. Right? And so the same can be true for us. Where our dependence on God is such that we no longer have to worry about money. And now I know money is important in this life. I know that. Right. But you know, there came a time in our life where I went to God and I said, God, your promise is you will not let your children go hungry. And, and during that period of time, uh, it was about this time of the year, uh, there, there was problems that had happened with the, the finances, and Shirley and I knew that we had insufficient finances to last us uh, every month to get through the month with food. Right. Uh, and that was, this whole scenario was going to carry on until February next year, the end of the financial year. We knew this was the situation, but God was our source. And he provided every single month. For the rest of that time period, we had food every month. Good food too, right? Our clothes never wore out or broke. Our children uh, didn't get sick, not once during, the, during that period. You see, when God is our uh, we, when we are fully dependent on God, He honors and He pitches up and He blesses us. Because here's the truth money doesn't last, but God's blessings are forever. Amen. Now, you know that it's God's will that we live under an open heaven all the time? Right? You know. This is what happened to Jesus. Jesus, uh, the man, went to John, was baptized. He came out. Yeah. Up until the point that he was baptized, uh, right, he was a man like, I'm a man. But he came out of the water. The heavens opened. The Holy Spirit descended on him uh, at, like a dove, right, what, in the bodily form of a dove, and... He was filled with the Holy Spirit, and from that point on, he lived out his entire life living under an open heaven. Right. Mark chapter 10 tells us uh, that, that uh, Jesus came out of the water, he saw the, the heavens splitting apart, the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. And this scripture is an answer to Isaiah's passionate cry to God. Tear open the heavens, Lord. Right. Let's try something. The bulls won this week. The stormers won yesterday. The sharks won yesterday. Right. Now that same passion is what we need when we go to God and we say, tear open the heavens, Lord. Because that's the passion that Isaiah had. And Mark says, the heavens split apart and are open. Jesus modeled that for us. He is our example of how to live under an open heaven. And what he did through the rest of his life as he healed the sick as he brought comfort to those who were hurting, as he set the oppressed free. That's our purpose. That's the task that we have before us. How did he do this? Right. 
He was fully dependent on God. He prayed, and then he did what his father told him to do. And that's all he did. You know, when, when his disciples saw what he was doing, they went to him and they said, teach us how to pray. And one of the things that he gave us in that guide in Matthew chapter 6, he says, pray like this. Pray, Father God, send your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Help us to do your will. He was teaching them to be fully dependent on God, not on themselves. He was encouraging them to ask God. Right? And so I'm encouraging you, ask God that his kingdom will come on earth. You know, I don't know about you, but asking somebody to do something there's a bit of hesitancy in me. Because when they say no, that's just rejection. Right? God loves us so much that he will never, ever reject us. He may say no, but it's not a rejection. It's because he knows best. So let's be bold. Let's be courageous. Right? And let's go before God and say, Lord, we need your open heaven. Because the truth is, if we do not ask, we will not get, says James in James chapter 4. You don't have because what you want because you don't ask God for it. So let's ask. Because the good news is that God is inviting us into his presence. He wants us to live under an open heaven with him. But he wants us to ask him. In Revelation chapter 4, uh, it says there's a, the door standing open in heaven. Right? The heavens are open. And the voice, the voice of God says, come up here. He wants, God wants us to draw near to him. He wants us to come and spend time in prayer and to spend time de depending just on him. And to be obedient to him. He's calling us into his presence. Now I can promise you there is no ladder tall enough to climb up there. Right. But what we can do is we can intentionally, determinedly, with boldness, say, Lord, here I am. I want to be close to you. And just spend time talking to him. Just like that. Do you know, we also call to obey. And in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, uh, we, we read there, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. And here's, here's the biggest word in the English dictionary. If you do this, says the Lord, the heaven's army, uh, the Lord of heaven's armies, then listen to God's promise. I will open the windows of heaven for you. Don't forget the if. I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to make it in. Try it. Put me to the debt to the test. Isn't it so interesting that the Bible links the obedience of God's people to the opening of heaven? And here in Malachi, we see that our obedience in managing our money is a crucial element in seeing God open his heavens to us. Because when we obey him, then we receive the true riches of heaven. Luke chapter 16, uh, where Jesus is talking about uh, the true riches of heaven. Read it like this. If I am trustworthy with my worldly wealth, then God will trust me with the true riches of heaven. 
because we need to demonstrate that we are faithful in managing our money so God pours out blessings we cannot contain. And remember we said earlier in Proverbs chapter 10 that God's blessings are our greatest wealth. And so finally, life under an open heaven, it's available for us. It's there for the taking. It's getting ourselves to the point of trusting God, obeying Him, as we do what Jesus has called us to do. And when we do that, it leads to revival. You want to see revival? No, nobody wants to see revival. Do you want to see revival? Right? Then do what Jesus tells us to do. <laughs> okay? It goes backwards there. Finally, got forwards. Thank you. Do what Jesus tells us to do. You haven't done this before, he says. Ask using my name, and you will receive, and you will have abundant joy. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, cast out demons, give as freely as you have received. Because life under an open heaven is to be shared with others. And so we say, more, Lord. And we remember that uh, an open heaven, Ron, just do the next one, please. That an open heaven is where God's perfect world of beauty and order and purpose fills this one so completely that it resembles heaven in eternity, even though we're still here in time. That's what an open heaven is. Amen. Wouldn't you want this? Lord, bring revival. Father, bring revival. Lord, hear the cry of our heart. Hear our heart, Lord, as we seek more of you, more of your presence, more of your power, Lord, simply because we want more of you. Come and fill us, Lord, so much that we are all of you and none of us. Fill us, Lord. Guide us, Father, so that we live under an open heaven. Forgive us, Father, for, for choosing to do it ourselves and not to be focused on you. And Father, this morning, we need you. We can't do this on our own, Father. We need you. Just more of you. And right now we choose, above all else, we choose to live under that open heaven that is totally open. And because we choose that, Father, we ask, would you help us? Would you guide us? Would you show us what this means in Jesus' name? Amen. I'm going to invite you, if you are here this morning and you are ill, we believe God heals, right? So if you are not feeling well, please, straight after this last song, once you come to the front here, folk will pray with you. Don't forget uh, that if there's a need in your life that you are aware of, right, come let the folks pray with you so that, they, uh, that God can help meet that need. And then to those folk who are visiting us for the first time today, please try not to rush off. Take a moment, come and meet with Tony and some of the folk in our, our guest zone at the back there as, you, as you're going out. Uh, 
Other than that, have a wonderful week. Amen.
worship your holy name. Have a blessed week, everyone. Remember, tomorrow is a holiday, so enjoy. See you next week.